It smells like sulfur. Yeah, it's warm in here. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, we're in hell. We must be talking about Picard season two. That new show produced by Alex Kurtzman. Now Rich, I was shocked to receive a text message from you saying, are we talking about Star Trek Picard? I was just completely ready to not watch it. I haven't watched Star Trek Discovery season three or the beginning of season four. I've written all these things off. And I was about to write off Star Trek Picard and Rich Evans texts me at 4.30 in the morning and says, Mike, are we redoing Star Trek Picard season two? I was like, what is he, drunk? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what? No, we're not. Do you want to? I was just, I was just done with it. And then you said, I, th I think we should. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll watch the first episode. Uh, but the surprising part is, I was shocked to discover I didn't totally and completely hate it. What? Oh. What? What? Oh my God. Oh my God, it's, it's cold all of a sudden. I, I think hell just froze over because we absolutely 100% didn't totally hate Star Trek Picard. And those, that phrasing is very important. Didn't totally 100% absolutely hate Star Trek Picard. We're gonna talk about Star Trek Picard season two on this episode of I Absolutely Hate Myself. I'm sorry, yes, thank you. And we're back. Oh my God, that was a credit sequence. I'm glad I wore my, my Captain Picard hoodie. I thought maybe this is a little too warm for hell. But now it worked out. It, you know what? It, it, hell just had like a light frosting. Okay. It is a light frosting of hell. Here's the thing. I did not completely hate episode one of season two of Picard, but the way they fucking do TV shows now, the first episode of season two of Picard is like judging a movie based on the first six and a half minutes. Sure, 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 sure. It's like, did you like Titanic? I don't know. I only saw the first six and a half minutes. I understand what you're saying. However. Oh, you have paper. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to note, I, I believe that now we, all, everything we say here will be wrong. Oh yeah. Because th this show will eventually shit the bed. So the first thing I do is watch the credits, of course, and I'm, I'm looking for new names. Mm -hmm. New names. And of course there are 20 listed producers. That's not shocking. Um, there, there's 20 listed producers and I'm looking for new names and I see a lot of the same old names. And so I was like, you know, when, once they get to the final 19, 17, 18, 19 producers and then you start getting the big ones like Kurtzman and Goldsman, I'm like, okay, all right, it's the same team. This can't go right. Yeah. But it seems as if they may have taken some notes from the backlash. Because as, as, as much as they tried to hide it, Picard is the great, the greatest show ever. All the feels, butterfly tears. <laughs> That's what got me banned from the start, the official uh, CBS uh, Paramount Plus Star Trek Twitter account. <laughs> was this tweet right here, uh, where I where I mocked. Uh, I said my fav my favorite part was was when Picard turned into an undead zombie, and uh, Data killed himself. <laughs> I wrote all these like things, and I said it gave me all the feels. Butter hashtag butterfly tears. All the bots were saying that. Yeah, yeah. The fake, yeah. the fake uh, Twitter accounts that that they uh, they generated in order to give the show phony praise. Um, so I think I think the show in general didn't perform as expected, and someone out there took some notes, because I have some adjectives to describe season one, and, and let me know if you have any more. Okay. To to uh, to throw in the ring here. Depressing, nihilistic, angry, disgusting, foul-mouthed, hopeless, cold, sterile, ugly, gross, mean-spirited, juvenile, simplistic, blunt, and stupid, dumb. Okay. Oh, go good. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad we didn't miss <laughs> that one. It's a, a less, uh, you know, less complicated uh, word there, but just 
just straight up dumb. Because that's really the most shocking thing about modern Star Trek, isn't it? The dumb? The dumb. The dumb. And so, a, a couple of quick notes on the first season, right? Uh-huh. And this is, I think, what was so off-putting about it. They tried to tell some kind of epic story. They tried to make it very gritty and... Well, because everything has to be a season-long story arc now. Well, of course. It has yeah. to be. That's, that's, that's set in stone. And but... they, didn't, they didn't tell a good story, and they didn't explore Picard's character in any meaningful way other than the extremely superficial, ah, uh, Borg, bad thing happened, made me sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So um, they do, the, well, but we'll talk about Picard. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Characters were trying too hard to be tortured, complex, and dark. Soji, a, our noir heroine, trying to find out about her dark past. Raffi, drug-addled and carrying the baggage of her past. Rios, alcoholic and carrying the baggage of his past. Seven of Nine, psychotic and carrying the baggage of her past. Those are our main characters. Remember I had the graphic uh -huh. where everyone was either a murderer or a psychopath. <laughs> and, and so that, that is the, the, dumb, the dumb person way of giving a character complexity. Yeah. Is to have a horrible, tragic event in their past that defines them. And the first season was filled with that. You don't think they're getting at that with Picard in this season? That's what I want to talk about. I know. That's, that's the big I butt. Know. That's one of our big butts. But also mixed in with the flashbacks were like, looked like horrible murder scenes. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be dumb. That's where the big D comes in, the big dumb. Yeah. Because we've, we've explored, this is where they all sat around their writer's room. Their dry erase boards and their fancy, fancy shoes and pants and their rich, rich Hollywood money, and they, they said, well, what do we know about Picard's mother? Well, oh, we know about his father, right? Mm. His father was an asshole. <laughs> Even now, you manage to disappoint me, Jean-Luc. And, and he hated him. Uh, and, and his brother was an asshole. Well, what do we know about Picard's mother? Well, he hasn't really said much. Uh, having, taking the time to have a, a complex uh, character relationship. I mean, first of all, who gives a fuck about his mother? Picard's almost a hundred years old, right? Mm -hmm. I think any issues he might have as a person with how he dealt or grew up with his mother when he was nine have long been put to rest. Yeah, people hold on to baggage. He's 97 years old and he's an undead android. It's a bit late to be resolving issues from your childhood. But it's a valid thing to try to do with his yeah, character. He needs to be searching for a grave plot. Okay, <laughs> not, not resolving issues with what happened when he was seven. Um, why is it important for Jean-Luc to explore the road not taken at this stage in his life? Because he's still alive and his life is continuing. I had some major predictions last season that were wrong. Some major predictions that I completely whiffed. I have I have a big prediction for this season. Oh, do tell, Rich. Do you, uh, this is my. It's going to be completely wrong. Usually you're right, but Picard's mother is the Borg. Is the Borg in? queen? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that Picard's oh. mother is going to be the Borg queen. That's new. That is. That's that's the that's the traumatic accident that happened in Picard's past. His mother was abducted by Borg, and she got abducted trying to save Picard from the Borg. And they took a mother, his mother instead, and Picard got like hit in the head. And he doesn't really remember what happened. And that's why he went into space, Mike. All this whole time, he doesn't really remember it, but he's been searching for his mother. You know I'm right. The queen is stunning them, not killing them. Oh. oh. It's getting hotter in here. Yeah. Two. One. Yeah, so spoiler alert for the very first episode of Picard, the ending, uh, a big Borg ship comes through a spatial anomaly and they're, they're asking specifically for Picard. They wanna have peace talks. And um, so they bring Picard out and a creature appears on the bridge of the new Stargazer. And it, it, it looks like a female form. It's Dr. Borgtopus. Yes. 
Yes, she has got... She's got tentacles that start tentacles. shooting into everything. Um, but she has kind of like a weird like chainmail look. And Why would they conceal her face? Yes, it, do it doesn't look like the classic representation of the Borg Queen, which is this. Uh, this this is our, this is the, the usual look of the Borg Queen. This is uh, from Star Trek: uh, First Contact. We got played by originally played by Alice Krieg and then played by other lady <laughs> um, in the Voyager series. This is how you this is how you redcon this. You say that the reason the Borg wanted to make Picard Lacutus in the first place is because, because Picard's mommy's been looking for him too. That was her way of trying to reunite themselves. So his mother got kidnapped slash assimilated. This is my baseless speculation. A single change in Los Angeles, 2024. To save the future, we have to repair the past. Hold on. This is one thing I wrote down to pick up uh, about the positives. Picard's commencement address. Yeah. He references a line, let's see what's out there. And let's see what's out there. He attributed the quote to his mother. I choose to leave you with the words of my mother. And you know, of course, Picard, at the very end of Encounter at Farpoint, his line that closes the show is, let's see what's out there. Let's see what's out there. Why is he attributing, let's see what's out there to his mother? Your Borg theory is gonna be right. Even though in a vacuum, in a vacuum, in a complete vacuum, I did not hate episode one of season two of Picard, I have no faith in any of the creative team. No faith at all. I have a solid wall of bile built up to them, and I, I, that bias is just in me. I can't, I can't get past it. I can get past it enough to say, well, there's nothing specifically in this that I hated. Right. But I'm waiting, I'm waiting for like the ceiling to collapse on me. Yeah. And the nightmares to start. Yeah. She's the super, she must be the super queen, right? Yeah, she's the super queen. They turned Picard's mother into the super Borg queen. She's the queen of all the Borg queens. Yeah, you're, you're probably right, as sad as, as it is. I, see, I don't, I don't think I can go that dumb. <laughs> Alex Kurtzman. Are there uh, any ideas or possibilities that just keep you super charged up about the franchise? You know, for me, Real quick. Um, well, are we going? Are we going back to positives? Uh, we're going to go back to positives. Are we going to freeze hell back over? We could leave hell. We're going to leave burning, hell be because now I'm in hell. Now you're in. And, hell. and I don't think it's going to change <laughs> now that you've said that. Because um, that's going to be our big twist. We don't even watch. Need to watch the rest of the season. Now, I predicted in season one that the Romulans created the Borg, and I was completely wrong. Yeah, you're right. So I can be complete. Hopefully, hopefully, I am completely wrong. <laughs> so, I I I I said all my I, I said all my words to describe season one, right? Uh huh. Thinking about Star Trek fans in general, I th here's a couple of little changes they made, right? Picard's commencement address at the Starfleet Academy graduation ceremony. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it it it. It put Starfleet in, in a little positive light. All the cadets were going off on their missions. It was, it was lovely. The first time we saw Starfleet and the other one was when the Admiral called him a fuckface and it, it was gross and he, he didn't, he, no one knew who Picard was. Oh, and yeah, and another, another positive is we have a new Admiral figure who does not call Picard a fuckface. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Rios is now the captain of the Stargazer. He, he is not, he still has a cigar, but he's not a, like a, a, an angry, miserable alcoholic. Like I said, all the characters don't, and whether or not they should uh, be doing jobs in Starfleet as opposed to being in prison. Um, Agnes it, specifically, they, Agnes they hand specifically. wave the fuck out of that. Yeah, and um, what's his face? Uh, the, the Romulan kid. Elnor. Uh, Elnor. That, that made me cringe a bit. Like, what the fuck, he, he spent his whole life training to be a Romulan super ninja, and he just on a whim, he decided to go to Starfleet, and he graduated in one and a half years. He was inspired by Picard. And, and, and he, he had a, a, a penchant for beheading people. 
Remember when? Remember when all those dudes surrounded Picard on? on but but I give them credit. I give them credit. He is not beheading people currently. Okay. Okay. I give them credit. Credit where due, Mike. But but it, it, some some guy kind of threatened Picard, so he beheaded him, and I guess there's no consequence for no, that. No, of course not. Okay. No, of course not. All right. All right. So you just joined Starfleet. The, you're the kind of person we want in Starfleet. Now this is this is nitpicky stuff. This is nerd stuff, but. Uh, and this could have been budget related in the first season, but I, I said more than one kind of Starfleet ship. Um, I, they have a fleet. I noticed uh, an Akira class ship, an Excelsior class. They had kind of updated versions of vintage uh, 23rd, 24th century ships. The, the new Stargazer? The new Stargazer, Excelsior. They had, they had they, a They said galaxy. something that confused me. Okay. Or maybe you can clarify this. Sure. Uh, they describe they describe the Stargazer as being a refit. Is this supposed to be the old Stargazer, the Picard? No, he says um, he says well, not this ship. Well, the Stargazer was my first command, and not this Stargazer, of course. Okay. When, he, when he's walking down the hallway, he's like he's like. Because they also call it a refit, and someone on the writing team, I'm assuming, doesn't know what the fuck that actually means. That might have been wires crossed. The older these refits get, the younger they look. Unlike myself. Okay. They did find the Stargazer adrift. Yes, and they, yes. This very well could be a refit. Didn't get blowed up, did it? No, I think they, they just hauled it, it away. Yeah. Maybe they mean redesign of an older class I, I, of ship. I, I think the writers a were refit a dumbass yeah. and, and thought a refit was just an entirely new ship. That's what I think. The older these refits get, the younger they look. It's very possible that the people writing Star Trek don't understand Star Trek at all. Oh, do you think? Yes, I'm pretty sure about that. Well, this is a new ship, but she's got the right name. So yeah, the, uh, before when Riker shows up with the fleet, they had 700 Star, Star Trek ships, Starfleet ships, and they were all just clones of each other. Mm -hmm. And he, and he's on one, and he's like, I'm on the most powerful ship in all of Starfleet. And then all of them are all the same. And it just it felt lazy. Like they thought the fans or whoever's watching this don't care, which they're probably right. But it kind of isolated a little segment of people like me who appreciate all the different classes of Star Trek starships. Mm -hmm. um, and I was happy to see some of those. And then, you know. If there was a barrel here, I'm scraping the bottom off. Yeah, it, oh right? yeah. I mean, that's where we're at. And so you have a classic kind of opening. Rios is commanding the Stargazer, the, and then there's a space anomaly. And they're investigating a space anomaly. Uh, Picard is in love with his Romulan house servant. That feels... I, feels weird. It's weird. I wish you were actually around for the entirety of the previous season and they had some interaction with each, with each other. And that would have worked better for me. It feels a bit tacked on. So they can have some kind of subplot about Picard not opening up to people. It's, it's like there were boxes that needed to be checked. Yes. They're like, we've done the Borg thing. We've done uh, whatever. What about love? And what about his mother? He's 98 years old and he's a robot. Who, who gives a fuck <laughs> about love at this point? I don't even care about his character anymore. He's just too darn old. I'm going to... I'm gonna I'm gonna nitpick on top of your nitpicks. Okay. In in Star Trek terms, is Picard that old? Because we all know, Mike, you know yeah. that that Bones was touring touring the Enterprise D at 125 years old, Mike. Uh, yeah. 125. Picard is a spry middle-aged man no. in terms of the medical technology of Starfleet. Yes, yes, the, yes, I know what you're saying. Bones was looking pretty darn old. But he was 125 or 130? I think he was old. I think it was 134. How old do you think I am anyway? 137 years, Admiral, according to Starfleet records. I think it was 134, I think. Yeah. Mm. And so, yeah, but but you're that's the that's the limit of human lifespan. And so Yes, but is is a romance something we want from from a, a, a an elderly statesman slash diplomat? Oh, 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 oh! That's something that Patrick Stewart wanted. Please go on. Maybe, maybe. I think does he does he still want to be the leading action man? No, I don't. You don't think so? I don't know. I, I, you don't I, think so? That's not a little bit what's going on there. 
Are you are you are you talking about his ego? I'm talking about his ego. Yes. I don't know what's going inside his head. From Jean-Luc's point of view, they might be somewhat romantic, uh, which oh. uh, I have enjoyed very much indeed. He, then he meets up with Gein, and you want to talk about that? Do you have anything to say about that? It's nice to see Guinan again. I thought, I thought the aging excuse was kind of bullshit. It was stupid. It's stupid. I, I have enough. I have enough goodwill towards Guinan. If they didn't explain it at all, why she suddenly aged when she aged very, ages very slowly, I'd, I'd hand wave that. I'd been okay if they didn't say anything. Yeah. They threw in an explanation specifically for nerds like us, not knowing that we wouldn't probably give a shit. Here, here, and it's, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Well, it's fine. for anyone out there who's confused, Guinan, uh, uh, played by Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. is not a human. She's an Elorian, and they live for a very long time. Uh, example. She uh, was she like 700, right? Something like that. She was the bartender uh, at on 10 Forward on the Enterprise D, and then she was also palling around with uh, Mark Twain. I am from the 24th century, where you and I serve aboard a starship. And uh, 500 years earlier, and she looked identical. So El Orians live for a thousand plus years. The show, then she's like, well, and Picard's like, oh, hi, Guinan, oh, my God, you know. Although Whoopi Goldberg doesn't look that much older. No. She looks great. Yeah. Like, you didn't even need the line. Um, but, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, but their, their line is, and Jay, Jay, are you around? Yeah. Uh, let me get your opinion on this. Okay. So here, you, you, know, you uh, kind of listen to what we were saying. Yeah. So now we're jumping from... Uh, this is Star Trek The Next Generation to Star Trek Picard, which is uh, uh, roughly 30 years-ish, and Guinan has aged the, the amount that Whoopi Goldberg has aged, right? Yeah. So Guinan's line is this. Picard says, oh, Guinan, you, you got real old. And she says, well, you know... Elorians age so very slowly. Yes, but only if we choose to. I, I, I realize I hang around with humans, so I, Elorians have a special ability to suddenly speed up their aging if they want to. Now, I noticed that humans don't like to be reminded of their mortality, so I, I try to keep up. I hope that picks up. <laughs> now, Jay, here... Yes. She chose to age because to she, not freak out the people around her. Yes. And she's running a bar on, uh, uh, in Los Angeles on, on uh, the Forward District, Forward Street. And oh, the, my God. I didn't catch that. Yeah. Oh, the, that's so stupid. The address is that's 10 so stupid. Forward. Yeah, it, yeah. Oh. They show a sign. It's like the Forward District, Forward Avenue. And then the address of the bar is 10 Forward. I, um, I caught Forward Avenue, but I was thinking, is this a street we've seen before? Why? I, I didn't, because I didn't know Whoopi Goldberg was going to show up. Right. Yes. But in hindsight, yeah, that's so stupid. Yeah. Um, but but here, here, Jay, after after thinking about it for about 10 seconds, yes. or maybe one second, here's a, here's a better line, right? Okay. Guinan, you look kind of old. Well, after a thousand, Elorians start to get a little older. Or, you know. How about that? I was talking to Jay before we filmed, before you showed up. Yeah. I said the exact same thing. <laughs> the exact same thing. Seem, it seems like less stupid? Yeah. Right? Is that I, the... I mean, yeah, we're, this, is, this is major nitpicking. This isn't something I hate, but it's fun to dissect. You know when you're looking at like famous celebrities like, I don't know, uh, Bob Barker, Dick Clark, uh, Bob Hope, right? And, and you've, you, from, from age 50, to age 80, they kind of look the same. Uh, then overnight, <laughs> they just, oh my God. Yeah. Yep. The, l yep. Let's call it the, uh, l let's call it the Burt Reynolds syndrome. Okay. Where they look, okay. or, or um, what's Tom Selleck look like these days? You know, Tom Selleck, he's got the mustache and he looks. I think he's still under, he's, not, he's still on a TV show. He's probably, we're probably still seeing him under heavy makeup. But, but, but Tom Selleck is gonna suddenly He's gonna be on the cover of, uh, of National Enquirer, like, 
Tom Selleck's final days. and <laughs> His eyes are going to be red. <laughs> they're, and he's going to have like bags under his like, eyes down here. They're always bleeding from the <laughs> eyes. And, <laughs> and they look gaunt and sickly. His, his jaw's going to be just hanging open. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, boom. And so that's the explanation from Guinan. She, maybe she'll <laughs> lightheartedly say, you know, after a thousand, you know, aging kind of speeds up for us. <laughs> Do you like that Picard went to her for advice, but then told her nothing that was wrong with him? <laughs> you got some kind of thing going on, Picard. Are you in love? Did something happen where your mother got stabbed with a piece of glass, then turned into a Borg queen? There's some deep secret within you, Picard, that we haven't talked about on our TV show. You came for me to talk about it. Now, why don't you tell me about it? Okay, bye. Because that was for the audience. We got to see Guinan. We got a glimpse into the mystery. And we got to see Guinan. <laughs> What, what's Guinan doing? She's working at a bar. Like, do you remember when hell froze over when you kind of liked the, the, the episode? I, I noticed a lot of things. It sounds like people are trying to talk epic and mysterious. Like that whole, the whole romance scene with the uh, Romulan woman. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about because so much of what they said was steeped in vague, mysterious speech. Yeah. Oh, yes. She's what like, are you looking for? She's like, have you always... Or watched? you have never been looking. Yeah, why did you go to the stars? When I first came to work here, I saw you as a man who chose the stars. And after all this time, I've come to wonder, have you been seeking or running? As you say, I've spent my life in the stars. The part of me that really wants is the part that has to wait in line. Yeah, but then you got the um, D Girardi, the murderer. <laughs> and she jokes, she's at the bar. Remember that uh, Soji is like doing some kind of like, is she like ambassador? I think she's doing Android people ambassador work. Some, something yeah, like that. And yeah. Girardi's flying around with her and she's at the bar, remember? And she's like drunk. And she, and she does say... I fucking hate Agnes. She does say that she's half in the bag. Hey, well, look, I'm half in the bag anyway, so I'm going to give you a little advice. I, yeah, I know. I noticed that. That is a term. Not necessarily a reference, Mike. Well, I don't know. I doubt, I doubt any of the current Star Trek writers like you. <laughs> <laughs> I was, highly doubt them. Was it a shot? <laughs> yeah, Alex Kurtzman did not say, you know, I want to make a homage to Red Letter Media. <laughs> Ah, I want to ah. give them a shout out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, but she's at the bar and there's like a guy that's like hitting on her and, and you know, and, she, yeah, and she's like, well, yeah, you're, you, 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 you know, and, and it's kind of like, it felt like sitcom dialogue or mm -hmm. acting. It's like, uh, I don't know. I like, I like the the characters in the in, in Star Trek The Next Generation, how like mannered and mature the human race had become. You know what I mean? Sure, well, That's they, not exciting enough. Th sure, they had their moments when they would do something crazy or silly, you know, but, and then she joked around. She's like, well, when I was uh, partially psychotic, I murdered uh, this guy. My longest lasting intimate relationship, including the one that I just ended, is less than a year. I was recently cleared of murdering my previous boyfriend due to alien-induced temporary insanity, so I'm not exactly dating material, you know? Uh, another martini. She makes a joke about that, and you're like, okay, they're, they're trying to, uh, another thing I wanted to mention too, um, they're trying to d diffuse that or... or sweep it under the rug. Sweep, <laughs> sweep it under the rug. <laughs> Acknowledge it, but not make a big deal about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she murdered some guy. But, but you know, I think it's just like, hey, it's, it's, the, it's the old, like, if you save the universe thing, you can get a pass, <laughs> right? You could behead people. You commit genocide, you can murder anybody, you can do, as long, the ends do justify the means in Star Trek, as long as you save that universe. If it turns out you were wrong, then you go to prison. Uh, Kirk, Kirk and, his, and his friends, they, st they stole the Enterprise and they blew it up. Um, but, you know. They saved the whales. They, they saved the Earth from uh, uh, a, a giant 
piece of sausage in space that was going to tear up the planet trying to talk to whales. They happened to be there. And so they, they said, ah, you know what, in light of the circumstances, no, there were no beheadings in Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. Did, did we ever find out what the fuck that thing wanted to talk to whales about so no, badly? No, it's a, it's a private thing. They've been communicating <laughs> for eons, Rich across vast distances of space. That's how whales are so. Are they, are they a whale race? Are like, are like whales extraterrestrials? It's beyond human comprehension. That's the magic of Star Trek. There are things like that in Star Trek. We don't need to know. Also, the giant sausage in space may have been Picard's mother. <laughs>、well, Mr. I think you look absolutely positron. I think Girardi says to Picard, how, how are you doing today, sir? Absolutely positronic. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah something yeah. like that. And、yeah. then he's like, I'm fine, shut up. Don't talk about that. Are we never going to talk about that? Picard is, yeah, I think they're going to ignore that.、Uh, okay, okay, okay. That he's a robot, because he's, he's literally a copy of himself. With his brain waves, and he has a, a built in timer that will make him die at the age of a regular human. Which is stupid, but. So he's Picard. Don't question that he's a robot. I guess he, need, he would probably need some kind of maintenance or something. <sighs> Data always needed maintenance. He's, Does he's Picard gonna, know how to charge he's, he's himself? Gonna, he's going to last 10 years. It's fine. By the time they need to be maintenance, his, his timer will have run out. Data always had problems happening in his brain and things like that, you know? He was always getting like, shot at, though, and stuff. Well, th sometimes things would happen, they would malfunction. Do you think Picard has the same off switch that Data has on his lower back? Probably? Yeah. No, no, it doesn't. No, they、I'm、took that out. They, yeah. I don't, even think, I don't even think they understand that Data's a robot. I think. Because <laughs> they clone, remember when they cloned Data from a positron? You're right. They think he's like some kind of life form. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're right. They don't even understand what data is. They don't know what a robot They don't know what an android is. No, 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 no. Oh, God. What do you mean, do you mean robot? He's an android. What, I know what, they, some kind of, where do they come from? What planet do the androids evolve on? I don't know. I don't know. Just make up something. I just, I just, I just got hired to write Star Trek. I've never heard of it. I think, I think also, too, is <laughs> some data is, was not mentioned once. Picard and Data,、uh, the, the, the greatest love affair the universe has ever known for some reason, was never brought up, which is kind of nice. No, 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 no. Oh dear. You're a bit older than I imagined. Let me catch up. Q,、uh, there's also an aging thing where Q shows up and he's a, a, a deep fake Q who looks young and then he says, I'm going to make myself as old as you. Fine. Can I talk, can I talk about the way I feel? Yes. Because I've been, I've been a, I'm a battered Star Trek fan who's been, been through hell for like the last decade.、Mm -hmm. And just hearing that they're going to bring Q back, it's just like, oh God, you're going to fuck that up. You know, don't fuck Q up. Who does he think he is giving me orders? They're going to fuck Q up, Mike. Yeah. And it's like, even though I, I, I've, I've like, Divorced myself. Like, like I, haven't, I haven't seen、uh, seasons three and four of Discovery, and I do not give any fucks. I do not care. I do not care about any upcoming shows they've announced, but they, they announced Q, and it's like,、uh, why?、Uh, yeah, well, you know why. <laughs> Can you tell us anything about the new series and seasons that are coming up? I think that's,、uh, I think I was thinking about that when I was watching this program Star, Star Trek Picard. You could have,、uh, back in the old days, you had Star Trek, then you got Star Trek The Next Generation, and then when that starts to get towards the end, they, they brought out Deep Space Nine. When that starts to get towards the end, they brought out Voyagers, and then when that started to get towards the end, they brought out Enterprise. They had a flagship show, they had one Star Trek show, and now in the age of, of streaming and algorithms and you, you know, millions of. Pro they, The、uh, same with Disney and their Marvel products and their Star Wars products. We, we need a show for every kind of algorithm 
AKA person's interest, right? Okay. Can you tell us anything about the new series and seasons that are coming up? Why aren't they making a show for people who like Star Trek The Next Generation? I guess that's what Picard is. Is it? It's not. But what I'm saying is they have Picard, right? Uh-huh. Picture everything in a Star Trek program, right? And then branch it off into seven or eight different programs. You got Star Trek Picard, show about Picard. You got the Section 31 show. You got Brave New World, Kirk and Spock, back in the vintage times. You got Star Trek Discovery. Um, uh, what, what, am I missing anything? But you got then you got uh, ana- the the lower decks. You got animated. You got lower decks, and then there's something else called uh, it's a, another animated show. Um, oh, the Janeway thing the, with Captain Janeway. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I think that's. I don't know if that's more for kids. Lower decks is more like a Family Guy ish kind of. Uh, Rick Orville, and Morty. Rick and Morty ish. Yeah, yeah. And then. Um, Gosh, it's called, I forget what it's called, but there's another show. I know what you're talking about. I yeah. literally know nothing about it other than that it's an animated thing that has Janeway in it. Yes. Um, and I, I, so I think that's for teens. Okay. So they've, they've taken the Star Trek property and they said, how can we break it into nine different pieces for every kind of algorithm out there that wants this or that? <laughs> I don't quite know what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a new era of of TV. And so what we're going to get from this is just a bunch of trash. We will have five Star Trek series in production simultaneously. How does it feel to be at the forefront of the new golden age of Star Trek? We'll see. We'll see. I, I... I'm doing. I am. Do, I am. I am actually doing my best to be as unbiased as I can be. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it really is hard. John Luke Picard. Yeah. Is probably might literally be one of my favorite characters in all of science fucking fiction. I love John Luke Picard. More than Neelix. Yes, more than Neelix. More. I. I the character is amazing to me. Okay. And the the bringing back the, the the character he had the best chemistry with, the best antagonist Picard ever had was Q. And I desperately want this to be a thing that I would like, even though in my heart, I know by the time all is said and done, I'm going to be shattered. Q reveals himself as quite possibly a significant player in this season's larger storyline. But I want I want this to be good. Okay. Despite, despite everything I know. So far, and, and, and I agree with you, it, it, we're going to be, uh, uh, try to be unbiased, try to be optimistic, try to look at the pros and cons when we watch this, right? No. Yeah. And, and that's what we've done today, I think, when we've watched our first episode of Picard. And this seems to have made a very slight course correction towards trying to do a little bit better, and that's all I'll say right now. Yeah, we're very proud of season two. I think it's, I, th- I think it's, it's got a lot to say for itself. So when when should we reconvene? We're not going to go episode by episode. Two, two or three episodes. All right. We'll do two or three. We'll do it like we did last time. We did the first episode, I think, and then we did like like three and two and three. And... Do we have to? We don't have to. We can we can scrap this all right now, and we can leave hell. We can change this background to be heaven. I mean, normally I'm the one torturing you, making you watch Star Trek. I, I was perfectly fine with putting Picard in the grave. Sorry? No, I'm not, I'm not sorry. How many times did you make me watch shit? I watched season two of Star Trek Discovery because of you. I didn't make you watch three or four. That's true. <laughs> That's I was done true. after two. Oh my God, that, <laughs> that fucking robot angel suit. <laughs> Fucking fucking shit. The, the red the red lights. Fuck that. The red lights. I'm so embarrassed. For Alex Kurtzman. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Look up. Uh, three. Then the Borg Queen says something like that too. Like, look up. Isn't that something? Yes. Her yes. mother said too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh God, you're right. Yeah. Six. Five. Look up. Three, two, one. Luke. Look up. Yeah, because they're in the the glass dome. Uh, (laughs) Look up at the stars. Yeah, yeah, you're, oh, God. (laughs) Picard's mother is the fucking Borg queen. Rich said it here first, everybody.
Well, that's all of our talking for today. I have to leave now. You're going back to your, oh.